Well, oh boy, it's finally here. Satisfactory has now officially gone into version 1.0 full release. After five and a half years of me making content on this and eight and a half years of the developers making the game. And uh, it's weird to say. But I want to give a massive shout out to Coffee Stain for giving me a couple of days early access so I can prepare this video. So if you was wondering why there was no videos over the weekend, now you know why. Because it would have been fair to you guys to get videos with me having knowledge and then and it, it wouldn't make sense so in today's video i do want to kind of talk about the things that have been announced and also the things that have not been announced which are super duper spicy a little pre-warning if you don't want to see any of them i recommend kind of turning away now uh, i'm not going to show you any lore i'm not going to show you any story stuff i'm not going to show you any collectibles and i'm not going to show you any easter eggs i am pri primarily going to be showing you buildings some function some quality of life stuff they've added and some other things so prepare for your socks to be blown because these guys have been hard at work so for the first time in the satisfactory 1.0 era the next chapter of our, of our adventure remember to like subscribe and also leave a comment even if it's just an emoji and without further ado let's do this so the first thing is first is the title screen you can see that we have a couple of new pioneers and that's because if we go into our newly designed hub, we can see it's had a bit of a makeover. And <laughs> you can now put things in the toilet. You can just put them in there. And then you can also just flush it. <laughs> we can now flush the toilet. Also, we've got a sign up here that says zero days since last incident. And yes, this does go off in game time. So if seven days go by, it will say seven. And if you die, it will go back to zero. So we don't have to manually do this anymore with signs but also if we go into the lockers we can actually see we now have a character customization which is pretty pretty cool so we can have a different helmet we can change the colors um and uh yeah we can now do a lot of cool things and uh i don't know what color i'm going to be yet but we'll see but also there's hidden ones around the map so make sure you go and find them next thing the hub interface has had a bit of a rework as well so you can kind of see it's all got clicky buttons which are very very satisfying which is pretty cool next if we go into video settings we do have some new things obviously we've got a run hardware benchmark and if we go down here we now have a conveyor visual quality and we also have conveyor belt item frequency and conveyor belt render distance i do recommend bringing these downs if you're on a, a medium to low end pc because this can be a bit of a hog so you might want to lower them down just to gain that bit of fps and i will do an fps guide pretty soon and also global illumination has had a bit of a tweak and if you click the little drop down arrow this comes up this little box and now we have dark moody dark moody bright and bright so we have global illumination preset dark moody dark moody bright and bright so as you can see it only changes very slightly and of course you need to be able to run lumen to use these presets but I've jumped over the T update 8 version because as we know, when you used to do an auto save, it used to take forever. Well, I've just got one. And this is where now we usually wait. We usually sit here, twiddle our thumbs, maybe go for a stretch. And not everybody's save file is, you know, extremely large or anything like this. So it doesn't usually bother some people. But quite the majority of satisfactory players do have large file sizes and large saves because they like to build megas or maybe it could just be a pc hardware issue you might have a low-end pc which means your low times are also going to be longer you might have an high-end pc but because of the size of your save you know it's going to be uh, longer i've got a high-end pc and somebody's got a low-end pc and it does mean their save could be longer than mine it all depends on your pc specs so right now we are still waiting the timer is still ticking and then and still there we go but now within satisfactory 1.0 that is no longer a bloody issue because easy as that it's done did you even see it did you blink it still amazes me every bloody time going from new enough a minute to whatever that was ridiculous next up we have the converter but just listen to these sounds oh 
how cool and alien-like does that sound? And then, yeah, if we look in the uh, recipes as well, we can see time crystals, the excited photonic matter, which I'm calling blue juice, dark matter residue, which is pink juice, uh, and then there's obviously alternate recipes in here and all that kind of good stuff. So you've got like the fixite, and you've got all of these in here as well, which was shown in the earlier trailers. Next up, we have the quantum encoder, which is a big boy also. It's quite a quite a few foundations in length. And then as Snut said in the trailer as well, we can see that all of the uh, residue is a byproduct on every single recipe. Next up, obviously, we have the March 6 belts, which can now utilize the full efficiency of a miner at clock speed of 1,200 per minute. And they are quite the zoomy boys. Next up, we have the new looking MAM, which looks like this, which is super nice. It's a lot better than what it was before. Uh, we've just got a lot more components and screens and even a hatch for like our hard drives. And then if we go into here, we can see we have the hard drive library now where we can research hard drives in here, which we can get a multiple of uh, two. And then if we don't want that, we can recycle it for another two. But just remember, you can't go back on the original two if you decide to change them. Then in here, we also have the alien technology, which we can see in here, you start off with like the Samor. It also introduces the Mercy Spheres and then also the Summer Sloops. The Mercy Spheres now look like this. Look through the window and witness a threat. And also, Summer Sloops look like this. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that Bean now has a girlfriend. Damn, that's some stinky breath. Also, we can now do this with belts by pressing R. And also you can press control to keep the line going forward. When placing buildings, you can now see a new little indicator indicating that it is correct. It is lined up and that, that is the input and that's the output. Also, fuel gens now output 250 megawatts, but also consume different burn rates. So we can see rocket fuel burns at 4.167, turbo fuel now burns at 7.5, ionized at three liquid biofuel at 20 and fuel at 20 per minute we also have the new alien power augmenter which is a new building where you can construct in the mam from summer sloops and as if you notice it does have a input and this is what the building looks like and i'm going to be honest it has to be my new favorite building Oh yeah, but don't get too close. Because it does blast you away. <laughs> oh, I'm still going. This is not good. <laughs> if you connect it up to a power line, you can see that it automatically gives you a production of 500 megawatts, but it's also boosting by 10%, which is 50 megawatts. But if you were to input an item called the alien power matrix, it does this. So what it actually does now, it boosts it by 30% instead of 10%. So the alien power matrix boosts it even further. And as you can see, I do have a small little power plant providing me 1000 uh, power. And if I was to go into here and show you, we can see production is 1000. This over here is currently producing 650. And if I was to merge this one to this one, this will now boost this power line. And now if you look at it now, we are now getting a production of 1,950 megawatts. So that's providing 1,000. That was originally providing 650, but now it's providing an additional 300 on top of that. But just keep in mind, you can stack these. So the numbers will vary depending on the mathematics. Next up, we have the nuclear power plant, which if we just put this down, this has a new fuel it can burn which is called Fixonium. And if we go up here and then look inside at the supported fuel types, we can see that uranium is currently burning at 0.2 per minute, which equals at five minutes per rod. We have plutonium at 0.1 per minute, we killed 10 minutes per rod. And then we have Fixonium 
at one minute per rod. Next up is the drone port. If we go inside, we can now see it doesn't just need batteries. So thank you, coffee stain. So we have batteries, package fuel, package turbo fuel, package rocket fuel, packaged iron fu ionized fuel, uh, uranium fuel rods and plutonium fuel rods, but not just the fuels. On top of that, depending on the fuel the drone is burning, does depend on the speed the drone flies at. So if it is a cheaper fuel and it's an easier fuel, it's going to fly probably at normal speeds. But if it's a more expensive fuel, it's going to get from A to B a little quicker, which will help with your throughput. The next building is the Dimensional Depot, which is this beautiful thing. And it has to be one of my most favorite features in regards to 1.0. And this is what the Mercy Spheres are now used for, which you use in the Alien Technology tab. You go down here and you start working towards the Dimensional Depot. And then once you connect up a belt, for example, screws, because everybody loves screws, we can then go into our inventory and you can see we have a new little window attached to our inventory, which we can close and open with this arrow up here. And what this does, it's now uploading all of our items to the cloud. So let's say, for example, you're running around in the world and you're like, oh, I need some screws. Well, you can go over to your dimensional depot over here, grab the screws and then take them over to your inventory. Easy as that. But also you can take them back and send them and upload them to the cloud at a limited rate and they can all be upgraded within the MAM itself. So don't expect to be uploading at super fast rate straight away because the uh, uploader has a limit of 240 per minute and that is the maximum size so what you might want to do is put down three of them that's inputting three of the same item and what this does it increases your speed limit because technically this is a limit of 240 that has 240 that has 240 so all of this can go into your cloud at a faster rate but just remember that mercy spheres do have a limited quantity in the world so don't go overboard on the dimensional depots but let's say for example you wanted to build a new building well now you can see at the bottom we now have frames which is in orange because that is in our personal inventory and then if we also see the purple ones that is currently in the cloud storage so if you run out of items it will pull from the dimensional storage which is a pretty cool feature next we have a new looking building which is the teleporters which is a cool looking design and yes it does have an input so it does require a resource or an item to power it up so bitch you must be wondering what item that is well i can tell you it is a singularity cell and these are pretty expensive to make but also you need to select a linked portal which we've not done because we do have a second one which is called a satellite portal so the main portal needs to be fueled where the satellite does not so we put down a satellite portal which you can put anywhere on the map but just remember the further the portal is away from your main the more power it will draw so now that we've got this down we can actually select the link portal which we're going to put down the portal we just put down which is the main once you've done that you select the link that is now done and then we can go through <gasps> oh no but we can't that is because we've not put the singularity cells inside the main one so back at the main portal all we need to do is just quickly put the singularity cells in there it then needs to charge up and once it's charged up and configured it is then it figures out the power it needs to get from a to b and we can just keep an eye on this and this will tell us but it does have this awesome animation you can see the portal is slowly opening and then all you need to do is just jump into it and it'll pop you out the other side which that was a bit weird it never normally stops you like that <laughs> So as you can see, because it does require singularity cells, they are pretty expensive to run. So you need to make sure you're making enough to keep these powered, which you're more than likely going to be making a teleporter hub in your main factory, which will dis which will get to you uh, into your other factories around late game, because obviously singularity cells are very expensive to make because you will need nuclear pasta we now also have some stirs well foundation stirs four meters two meters and one meters this saves us basically putting down a foundation uh, like we would normally would and then holding control taking it halfway across and making steps this way but because it oh i made that wonky but as you can tell you still can't run up that there is ways uh, and methods of making these steps in these by using frames uh, and also using beams and all that kind of stuff but there's no longer we need to do that because we can just place these down and it does come with the other options because we can go into here go into the customizer materials and change it to the other ones 
just like that. And obviously, we've got the new finishes, which we have carbon steel, deuterium, chrome, copper, and unpainted. So we can paint these. Obviously, it's not going to really work well on foundations. But for example, on machines, I can get the gold one. And I can paint all these gold if I want to. And uh, it does kind of look sweet. So I, I'm, I'm expecting a lot of people to use these in some form of like designs in the factories, especially making the maybe the battery plant looking more, you know, metal and robust. It look pretty cool. And then we also have the new blueprint machines. We have the Mark 1, the Mark 2, oh, and the Mark 3. Also, the world now feels complete because before we only had half of the backdrops available where the rest are now available now also all the way around the whole entire map. Also, we have some new eggs for the uh, bees. Also, Samor now does some weird, weird things. I never thought an ore would speak to me. Also, the water has had a bit of a makeover, which was very long, long overdue, as we can see. Also, the lighting looks a little different, but there's no confirmation on this as of yet. It does look a little bit more vibrant, and there's a bit more in the colour and whatnot. But also, the water has had a bit of a rework as well, as we can see, which is very, very long overdue. But little word of warning, in some places in the map, the water has risen, which means that your factory, if you are going to be continuing on, might be having a little bit of a flood right now. So if you do want to continue, make sure to check that because you might need to raise some things a little higher. Also, all the caves are now complete. So you can expect this kind of look and feel all in it around all the caves. So expect spiders or cats or keep an eye out for Mercy's Fees and Summer Sleep while you're in here as well, because who knows? They might be around because I can see one right there. You got to admit it. You got to love these bioluminescence. And this is probably the, the least I've seen in a cave. There's some beautiful looking caves. GG, Hannah. Oh, yeah, the bacon now looks a little different. <laughs> and as you know, we've had some node changes across the entire map. Because if you look down below us now, just down here, this is where two quartz nodes used to be. Well, they've gone bye bye. Also, a lot of the nodes have changed from medium to pure, or pure to normals, or normals to impure, but there's a lot more nodes across the map. But look at these views. And this is where we're going to end today's video. So hopefully you have a fantastic first day in Satisfactory 1.0. And uh, much love, and check out my other content right here. And as always, keep smiling, and I'll see you in another video.